Invite a Budget Blind Style Consultant to show you how to transform your rooms just by changing your window coverings. Canada's number one choice for window coverings. Visit budgetblinds.ca today. Tonight, cracking down. When windows are tinted, it's difficult to see the driver inside. For safety reasons, you need to make eye contact with people at intersections. Drivers with tinted windows beware, as Lloydminster RCMP are targeting you in a special campaign. Plus, reaching out, Mayor Rob Saunders speaks about the new Alberta government's role when it comes to fixing local health care issues and holistic healing. In this week's Healthy Living, we take a look at the growing popularity of essential oils. In sports, finding their groove. The Northwest AA Prairie Pirates sail to another victory against North Battleford. This is New Cap News with Bart Pityasek. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Lloydminster RCMP are cracking down on drivers with illegally tinted windows. Police are putting flyers on vehicles, reminding them that tint, spray or film on front windshields or on front driver and passenger side windows is illegal in Alberta and Saskatchewan. They say many people may not be aware of this or understand why. Tinted, it's difficult to see the driver inside. For safety reasons, you need to make eye contact with people at intersections or with pedestrians as they're trying to cross the street. It's really important to have that visual confirmation from a driver that you've been noticed. Police also say if you're involved in a crash or need to escape your vehicle, windows might not break the way they're designed to if tint is applied. Fines for illegally tinted windows can be as high as $155. It was a chance for the public to get answers on the current state of seniors' care in the border city and what the new Alberta government's role will be, as Mayor Rob Saunders took questions at the Concerned Citizens for Seniors Care Society, AGM. Saunders, who serves as the Bi-Provincial Health Services Committee, says the new NDP government does not mean that the city will have to start from scratch when it comes to developing health care, as the Memorandum of Understanding takes the election of a new government into account. The MOU is, uh, is uh, uh, designed to accommodate any uh, provincial acting government. So even though we have a new government, we still have a bi-provincial agreement. While Health and Seniors Minister Sarah Hoffman is still getting settled into her new role, Saunders says he's confident after hearing her recent take on continuing care. Need a few She's becoming active. Uh, it's a very quick ramp up and uh, hope to meet with her very soon. In a sea of Tory blue that Lloyd Minster is, I am quite hopeful uh, and, and uh, am, am pleased to, to see uh, uh, the breath of fresh air that a, that a new government uh, will bring. As for the Bi-Provincial Committee, they now wait for the Joint Services Committee, the group that investigates if affected services are being delivered, for their report. And now we'll have more on the meeting as well as the current state of expansions for the Pioneer Lodge tomorrow on UCAP News. Well, Senevis Energy says its Foster Creek oil sands project is back to normal operations nearly three weeks after a nearby forest fire forced an evacuation. Total output at the Foster Creek is now at about 135,000 barrels per day. It's right before it was shut down as a precaution. Senevis expects its second quarter production average to be cut by about 10,500 barrels per day as a result of the outage. To put that in perspective, total oil production across all of the company's operations averaged about 218,000 barrels a day during the first three months of this year. Essential staff were able to return to Foster Creek on June 1st to inspect the site and to begin starting it up again. Well, they haven't hit mainstream medical practices yet, but are growing in popularity. And in this week's Healthy Living, Anna Kanotbe takes a look at the topic of essential oils. I would rather um, use something that's from the earth, from a plant. It's basically the blood of a plant. Tammy Bell uses essential oils for various reasons. She hopes to eliminate all the chemicals and toxins in their home. Use them um, for sore muscles. We use them. I use them for cleaning, um, for cooking and baking. We drink them. Um, I use them to wash clothes. Often using them with her children. I use them for my kids' temper tantrums. I use them to, you know, get them into a better mood. It was kind of the first night in three years that she actually fell asleep by herself. And sleep is a big reason Cheyenne Smith uses them as well. My husband doesn't snore anymore, so that's awesome. We've just been putting it like on the bottom of our feet and just kind of helps with sleeping and snoring and restlessness. And 
It doesn't matter what it is. As long as it smells good, it makes people, it puts people in a good mood. And bottom line, that's what it is, you know. Just puts people in a good mood. Aromatherapists say essential oils are specific and complex. It's important to research what you're using and why. She says diffusing can be just as effective and safer than putting them on your skin. Just take a basic course, you know what I mean? Learn about 10 of the basic essential oils that are everyday use, you know. Just get a good understanding of um, the safety limitations, you know, that are in place. When you're pregnant, um, when you're on any sort of medications, I would absolutely advise you speak to your healthcare practitioner. Um, essential oils are very concentrated. Doctors don't prescribe them yet, but many wouldn't be surprised if they hit the shelves in time and after more research. I think doctors will use them. I think that's a good format to use them for, you know, like swollen, like especially, you know, people get injured in car accidents or whatever like that. They have injuries or they have chronic pain, chronic conditions. I, I do believe it will help heal them up somewhat. I like how they feel, like if I have a headache or something, I can put them on my temples. Anna Kanafe, like New Cap News. Back to local news now. It was a chance to celebrate a major milestone for the Border City Farmers Market. And this as the group marks four decades of business. Evan Zawalek has more from the day's festivities. Every Thursday for the last four decades, people have been coming to this market for many reasons. It's fresh food. It's local growers. We know what's in the food. We, it's local marketers. It's small business. It's just very community oriented. It's wonderful. I usually do earrings. They're like my random. I don't like to buy them from box stores. So if you can go to a farmer's market, you get more one of a kind jewelry. To thank people for their support over the years, organizers wanted to do something to give back to the community. We've been planning this anniversary since we had our 35th anniversary. So um, we're just so happy to have made it 40 years and to have such a great market. So the board of directors really got together and decided what's the biggest, best way we can thank our customers for supporting us for 40 years. It's so nice because it's a community event. It's a community feel like this is an amazing turnout. This is the most people I've seen here, so it's nice to appreciate the customers that are loyally supporting us each month, each week, um, for all these vendors. Each week throughout the summer, the market will continue to bring in local entertainment in an effort to draw people in. I think farmers markets are really important. Um, they really connect local consumers with local producers. Um, they encourage small businesses. They keep money in the community. Um, they're a wonderful place to come and meet and socialize. I think they really provide a vital role in the community. Eva Zawalek, Newcap News. For over 100 years, a plot of land south of Wasika has been farmed by the same family. As Gerard Lampau explains in this week's agriculture report, the fifth generation is now currently producing grain for another season. 160 acres for $10, but you had to break 10 acres a year and you had to live on the homestead six months of the year. This family is now in its fifth generation of grain production. There's a lot of opportunity in agriculture and in farming and uh, I'm not a I'm not a city guy. I like I like the big wide open spaces, and uh, it makes me really proud to work on the family farm. My grandparents, uh, Rupert and Eva Wakefield, came from England to this country. Arrived here October 30th, 1905, and lived in a hole in the ground the first winter. This plaque behind me is in recognition of the Wakefield Payton family farm established here in 1905, just south of Wasika. The plaque was put up here to honor a century of farming, and Keith's mom, Amelia Wakefield, got married to Bob Payton in 1936. I'm very happy there, and his wife have carried on. I did go to school for two years as ag mechanic, and uh, didn't quite get any jobs after, so I just kept coming back to the farm. Yeah. Pioneer Rupert Wakefield spent his week away from his wife, Eva, traveling to St. Wahlberg to bring back logs for the cabin. The 1920s were good years, and then came the Depression years. The family stayed strong and kept the farm going. Keith tells us how he met his wife. Claire came from North of Maidstone to teach school at a little school down here in Lilydale. And I thought I'd better go down and see the teacher before some other young guy got there. 
And so we went together for three years and got married in January the 8th of 1960. I don't think I've had it tough when I read about the pioneer ladies that uh, started out this country. We haven't had it tough at all. Claire and Keith also have a daughter, Michelle, who is studying to be a vet. The farm now has 5,300 acres seeded, and the lack of moisture is a real concern in this year. You can't do anything about the weather, and you can't do anything about world markets. They won't be spraying until rain comes, but if drought sets in, they will cut back on spending. To be a farmer, you've got to have nerves of steel. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News.